It's a pleasure welcoming you, uh, comrades, Sakris, at this uh, political rumbles here in Core Wave TV. Yes, uh, we're here to discuss uh, uh, trended issues uh, bordering on the Mazina the Kanu release uh, to see his doctor. Is that a favor done to him by DSS, or is DSS uh, succumbs to the court's uh, ruling at this time? Yes, DSS has never arrested him. DSS has had the arrest of DSS, which is a uh, uh, pinch. That's a Yusuf, Mogaji pinch. The arrest of DSS is in the federal federation. And uh, somebody ordered DSSS, which is the president, ordered DSSS for the arrest of Nam and, and for aggression. Right? And they said, do their work. DSS don't have any rights on the on Nam the Kanu. It's the, it's the president's. They are the one that have the rights. Court and release him. The presidents themselves say no. So, so you mean DSS can be used to, uh, to do some DSS, some, DSS, some dirty DSS, works? DSS is a DSS, security. It's a security. You can sack them. You can fire them. You can remove the director. DSS, you can remove anybody. The one that rule the country is the president and the presidency. They have the power, they have the authority. They are the one order, they are the one dealing with, they are the one dealing with Nam the Kanu. It's not GSSS. And people should not talk about security. National Security Agency is under the under the federal government, under the federal, and who is the federal government? The politician that rule the country, politician, the president, the presidency. They are the politicians, they are the ones that rule the country. That's all, it's not DSSS. I don't like talking about security man. If the president says release him, DSS don't have rights, so no. That's all. Okay, and now he has uh, attended uh, uh, some screening or investigation uh, regarding his head. Uh, do you think he, he will also return to the DSS uh, he he Dodge? He will return because they didn't release him officially. He must be released officially. He was abducted for a particular reason from Kenya. And they brought him to this country for a particular reason. And they will not release him for a particular reason. But that is the same reason. Which court have that court has ordered by the judgment of the country here that they should release him for that reason. They should release him for that reason. That's all. And uh, are you expecting uh, Tinubu's uh, dispensation or government to release him? Tinubu is Since a the court has given an order. Tinubu is a president. And Tinubu, they have uh, 100 and something, and if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, 109 or 10. Who is the presidency? And Tinubu is a president on those presidents. If they agreed, the ethnic part of the country agreed to release him, who is Tinubu to say no? Just a figure head. They know themselves. It's not the president Tinubu. President Tinubu can live there, anybody will come. So the ethnic part of the nation, they are the one that we agree together to release him. If it's only president, only president authority, that can release him, or I can grant him what he wants, then we have to do that. My worry is, uh, is that uh, are they acting based on their personal uh, prerogative or compliance to the rule of law? Because Nigerians' uh, uh, jurisprudence, legal jurisprudence, has acquitted and the discharge amounts in the camera. Then why should uh, any other uh, force or interest group uh, continue to hold him illegally? Now, Nigeria law is this. When you talk about anything from judiciary, anything Nigeria law, it's not against the ethnic powers. They know themselves. They decide who to be president, who not to be president. President is a figure head. These people, they are ethnic, but they don't rule in Nigeria. So, those people that rule, those people that rule Nigeria, they are the one who will decide. So, they don't obey law. They don't obey law. And what made them to obey law is happening now, which we understand that they must surely obey that law, either they like it or not. Because there's a voice that said that uh, actions be louder than voice. When action comes, those who are supposed to speak and decree, they will pass the decree immediately. 
Newcastle. A Catholic Archbishop said Nigeria on the brink of collapse. Do you agree with him uh, based on the current realities? Well, I'm not, I don't have vision for Nigeria. My vision is for Biafra. Biafra. Only what I need is Biafra. Not all what they are talking about because Nigeria is not even a nation for me. Because if any Nigeria do, if anything happens to any Nigerians in outside country, Nigeria is not speaking for you. Not even outside country, within the country. If anything happened to you in another country, what if Nigeria don't speak for you? I was in the Kuwait when I when I see that they deported some Nanjib, some Ghanaian. They deported them from Ghana from Kuwait down to Ghana. And from, uh, from Kuwait down to down to down to Mentum, down to Ghana. President Adwa Kufo from Accra called the president of Kuwait to explain why the deport is made. After the vote, they returned them back immediately. That wow. is Ghana. Nigeria, nobody will speak for you, Nigeria. So, president of Nigeria, they don't speak for you. I said, the president, I said, that the, I said it's your uncle. If it's your uncle, we speak for you. So, Nigeria here, it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a colony. That's all. Wow, that is uh, quite. Uh... Uh, good of uh, the Ghanaian president for speaking out in, in defense of his own uh, people and citizens. Now that uh, the Nigerian government uh, have refused to heed to the pains and uh, the cries of the people, the Labour Union Labour Congress is about to hit the entire street of Nigeria comes uh, 2nd of August. Do you think that can make any difference by way of protest or strike? All I know is that people will be won the election. The only thing people will, will do is that whatever people will be and this men and this people knows they will do. They take their mandates but they should do it. They should do it and face it and take their mandates back. But I stand for the public of Biafra. For those who are fighting for Biafra, whatever they know they can do to, to take over the nation, to remove the nation of Biafra from Nigeria, they should do it. That's all. The sit at home uh, commence today, that is that will last for two weeks. Do you think uh, there is a compliance uh, in the East? There must be compliance in the East. There must be. When I say there must be. Your reasons? Yes. My reason is that sit at home in the East. 90% or let me say 99% of Eastern region knows that knows that there's a commenting in Nigeria. And they have to go for it just like a referendum. Not until somebody will ask to sit at home before you sit at home. So which I believe that a lot of people in that area that's what they're what is happening. Not the way people say that they are using force, but I know that people have made up their minds. So, for me, I pray that we grant the country of Biafra. Biafra will come to stay anywhere from now. Even if we have to do this two weeks. In fact, any moment from now is your your projection. Yeah, I think that so. Well, could that be possible without a uh, that we can be released still under detention or uh, DSS uh, dungeon. The question of it is that they are adopted for particular reason. I did not say they are adopted for particular reason, but for that issue, they are free. The motion is granted his plan. That was demanded for. The motion is granted his mandate. That was demanded for. Either they like it or not, they will give it to him. And if they don't give it to him, what to make him, what to make them to give it to him is happening. And they know. Mm. And they know. Wow. Uh, to some millions of dear friends, uh, that would be an exciting moment should that uh, happen. As projected in two weeks, where then we'll keep in touch. Yeah. Generally, what do you think uh, uh, you can advise uh, the Biafrans and the Nigerians uh, who are passing through the worst uh, economic uh, uh, mishaps this transition? Uh, yes, the people of Biafra is just, uh, what I would just say that you should endure it. You should just enjoy it. Because if you're a businessman, you travel out, you travel every nation, you're looking for money. And you didn't see the money. And you are selling, you are looking for, let me say, a million, a million dollars. 
200 million. But you don't, you only see 10 million, I mean 10,000 or 5,000. What will you do? You kill yourself. You have to enjoy it, have you? So, the Biafra must enjoy it. That's all. And Nigeria is concerned, you must enjoy it. But only what we need is for the other mandates to come. So, as a businessman and uh, you have your business uh, in diaspora and in Nigeria. How has you, have, have you been coping with uh, the Nigerians' uh, economy and the, the government uh, policies that Nigeria, is not favorable? Nigeria economy always frustrating. And Nigeria, Hello. Um, Nigeria law, How you do? policy is frustrating too. For example, if you are bringing food into Nigeria, a bag of rice, a rice, they will charge you heavily. If you are bringing a car into Nigeria, they will charge you heavily. Even what you don't, what you buy only five euro, only five euro in euro. When you come down here, you will send over two hundred to three hundred million naira. So and it's frustrating. And there's a pity those who are buying it, but they can't do anything. They have to buy it. They need it. They must buy it. E.g. phone. They must buy phone. Phone that is two yen. They are selling two point five million. They have to buy it. Either they like it or not. But they will not get it from anywhere. But the nation, the government, has said they don't have the pains. The charges to to clear any goods in, in the Papa Wharf is much. Not only that. Why come down again to the warehouse? The charges in warehouse. The the tax is much. You as a dealer, what will you do? You put out the money on what you're selling, on what you're selling. So Nigeria have to cope with it. It depends it's in Nigeria. Well, Nigeria have to face it like that. Not everybody can do about it. Mm. Uh, my prayer is that the Federal Republic of Biafra will revive Nigeria. Which I know that moment Biafra will flee, and Yorubas will be free too. They'll fight to be free. free. And other people again, uh, Ariwa, they'll fight to be free too. Are you sure the Yorubas are still willing to push uh, the uh, dissociation of the Yoruba nation? Because uh, Sunday Bowu has been silent for quite uh, some years now, and uh, nobody is uh, standing in his place. For example, we have a nation called Sudan. One day, the southern Sudan joined with eastern Sudan, free from Sudan. They call those that to they call that to to region, southern Sudan. Now, because now, although they fought for the first time, but now they're doing well. They're doing well. Southern Sudan is very beautiful. I mean, business is flowing. That's a that's a social welfare for the cities. The products are not working there now. So really, yeah, the Western Sudan said they want to free from Northern Sudan. Northern Sudan said no. So they're into war now. So they must be free. So the same thing, Yorubas. Any day they want to free, and the Aousa say no. They will they will be, be in war too. They must surely be free. And once this kind of freedom comes, there will be competition of development everywhere. Yes, there will be competition of development everywhere. If Kuwait did not free from uh, Iraq, Kuwait will not be the highest currency in the whole world. When mm. Kuwait free, Iran free too. And Iraq stand on their own. So there's a peace everywhere there. And everyone develops at its own uh, pace uh, for the and chart the way forward for their people. So uh, everyone develop at their own pace Thank you. and they are manage their own resources for the betterment of the people within the region. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a wonderful time having you here in Call with TV. We appreciate your time and submission. It's been great having you. Thank you.